You've seen the television shows. You've read the books. There are things that go bump in the night. Step into our world. Me, the people. gentlemen my name is Angel and I am here with Nicole we are the founders of Connecticut Soul Seekers we're going to talk to you about some of the findings and some of the experience that we had since we were here in the cemetery you might ask yourself why would a spirit want to stay around the place where they were buried there's legend and myth that says that a spirit stays with their bodies until it actually is put into the ground and laid to rest but after that, why stay here? Why wouldn't you want to be with your loved ones? We've asked ourselves the same questions, and this is where we started out investigating in cemeteries, learning more, experimenting, and studying before we actually went into clients' homes. At one and point, home. Nicole and I were here at this particular cemetery where we were standing at that location, and as I was filming her during the investigation, we happened to catch a miss. Well, I happened to catch a miss coming past her, coming toward me through the camera. And I was screaming at Nicole saying, hey, 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 uh, you just got a mist that just went through you coming toward me. And I'm going to show you this clip right about now. Oh, my God. We're not claiming the following pictures we're about to show you now are spirits. But what we are saying is these photographs do have some anomalies in them that we were unable to explain.
Kevin LaRoque. I am one of the founders of what was formerly known as Beacon Falls Paranormal Society. Due to some, due to some complications, we had to um, close down Beacon Falls Paranormal Society, and we ended up joining, after we closed down, we ended up joining um, Nicole and Angel and Connecticut Soul Seeker team. On March 17th, 2012, we went to a private residence in Naugatuck, Connecticut. Um, and we got there, we started to set up. There's a lot of energy in the room, and well, in all the rooms, there's a lot of energy and a lot of banging going on. While we were setting up, we none of us heard it at the time, but we were setting up and talking, and all, all of a sudden you hear out of nowhere, it's in the recording. After we listen back to it, you hear some horrific scream, and I I honestly don't even know what it was or who it was. I couldn't tell what it was, but it was some horrific scream, and you can tell in the recording that no one knew what it was. No one even paid attention to it. No one even heard it because we just continued talking and setting up. Um, and that was one of many, many um, EVPs that we've had that we had that night. Now watch, you'll see me get the jolts, and then watch the, the bottom left of the screen. Kind of sounded maybe like a growl or something. You think it was 
more of a door. If you understood what I said, and there's someone in this room with us, can you come really close and light up these lights for me? Can you, can you, While we were investigating, we it was myself, Angel, Nicole, and the two clients. We all went into the master bedroom, and we sat down, and we started doing the EVP session. Uh, we had the K2s on the floor, and we had the Trifield meter with us as well. We were sitting there, and in the other room, you literally would hear like what sounded like someone took a thick, thick textbook and picked it up and just dropped it, and like that on a on a wooden floor, just flat, no bouncing around, nothing, just a flat bang. It sounds very low and soft to us when we hear you, and I need to know if I need to speak louder or softer. So if you can hear me okay, and I'm loud enough, go and light up that light. If you want us, or me, to talk softer, then light up the light. That's the easiest way you can oh, hear you go. that. You got it. It lit? Yes. Oh, yeah. Total orange. Three. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're here in uh, Naugatuck, Connecticut, uh, resident, and me and Nicole is actually doing an investigation in the master bedroom, sitting on the floor, and on my left side of the ears, I happen to hear like a growl, not too strong, not too light, it was just like somewhere in between, and I jumped out of the floor real fast, and Nicole was actually speaking to whoever was in that room at that moment and we can actually hear footsteps that was actually getting stronger and stronger walking toward Nicole and it, I guess it was getting too close and they decided to walk back and then on the left hand side of that room after Nicole was telling it to touch the camera instead of touching the uh, camera that was attached to the uh, tripod it touched the camera that I have in my hand right now. Um, so it got a little confused at that moment, thinking it was the other camera or this camera, but it touched my camera instead of the camera that's steady. Like, if there's three of you, can you make that noise that you've been making? I'm shifting my feet. Can you make that noise that you've been making three times in a row? So how many of you are here? I could have swore I would have just heard eight or three. Eight or three? I thought I heard something. But not from in the room. It sounded like it came from out there. So how so many of you are here? here? I don't know if you knew that we could hear you or not, but we heard you talking to the little boy, to Caleb. Do you like to talk to the little boy? That was two. Take all the energy that you need 
and just give it a nice shove. If you hit it from the top, it'll probably fall over a lot easier. Okay, does it? Yeah. Go ahead, you're doing good. Keep going. Something is standing in you that corner. You can do it. I know that you can. I got goosebumps everywhere. Come on, you can do it. I know that you can do it. Take all that energy and you just give it a nice shove. Come on, keep going. You got it. You got this. You can.